caution a true an example so getting straight into it okay typically it's a typical question that you get asked in interviews what's the difference okay between recursion and iteration okay so looking here at my code that you should be able to see on screen we have a simple piece of code here that you have got in within your main method okay which i'll go through called two different functions down here you can see some of array iterative and some of array recursive so you can probably guess what they're going to do one is going to sum up an array's contents by the use of iteration the other is going to use recursion okay and in doing so we'll get an overall sum i.e which i have as a variable okay which have a class level variable there it's at static level don't worry too much about it if you don't understand about static non-static but the main important point is it's a global variable that we can use to sum up all of the contents of the array but more importantly to the point of this example is the difference between iteration and recursion okay we should know that iteration is like these strings looped okay think of both concepts as being loops but how do they achieve that okay at this stage of your programming you should be well aware of the for loop okay and we can see that in operation here in our course method some of array iterative which brings in as its parameters two different two different parameters number one the array and number two the point at which the array starts okay and what we do then is very very simply is we use a for loop to go through that and to produce the content so what i'm actually going to do here very very simply here is just as you can see i've got all the code there so i'm just going to comment out for two split seconds the code there in relation to array iterate uh, recursive and run this code so if i run and run main Give it a few seconds, okay. And okay, we got 10, two, three, and five is 10. Now, what it actually did here, and without going into too much depth here, is that it used a for loop. And I called that for loop to go through the contents of that array and spat out an answer, okay, return overall sum. So it just went through those contents. Now, it went through the array, obviously, you know what I mean, two, three, and five so it hit all of those instances but we only use one method call and it did everything in that way so it looped through the contents of the array however the difference between that and recursion is as follows is that recurs recursion okay is the key point about recursion is that it is a method that calls itself from within itself to repeat the actions of what the method is meant to do so we can actually see here some of array recursive okay int x and int end now don't worry too much about the the same use of variable names and so forth like that they are local to these two methods but what i'm actually going to do in this instance is okay just get rid of these two ones here okay get rid of any calls in relation to what was it going to say the iterative array or sorry, the iterative method, I should say, and just use the recursive method, okay, and do that. So we'll only go down to here, do some recursive, we should get the same answer because we're feeding the same contents in, okay. So go back up there to run, I should be using, obviously, Shift F10 to speed up things, but look down here, lo and behold, give it a few seconds, and there we go, 10, okay. So we're producing the same result, but we're using two different mechanisms to do it now you might say to yourself okay what are the basic concepts then within recursion okay how do you form a recursive method first of all anyway it has to be doing the same task virtually every time okay there are certain components that was the first one obviously the second one is that it has to have some kind of terminating condition in order to stop calling itself if we look down here okay i do feed in x and i do feed in an end okay and end is the index so that is the index that we're pointing at at each time so if you look at this here if end is less than x dot length length i should say and you can see here 
that is being fed in, okay, the index being fed in is zero. So if it's less than the array dot length, so in other words, zero, one, two, right? It will not go beyond that point. That's your terminating condition. You need that in recursion, okay? And on line 28, right? All what we're doing here now, it's a fancy way of doing it, but that there on line 28 is actually, okay, it's adding each one as we go along. Okay, it's nothing to do with recursion. I was just being a bit smart, as always. But I was being a bit smart there. An overall sum, how you can actually read that is actually, you could rewrite that, that sentence there as equal to, overall sum is equal to overall sum plus x end. Um, but what I'm also doing there, the last, um, these two post increments there, what they're actually doing all in one line is I'm grabbing whatever index I'm pointing to at that point in time, adding it to overall sum, and then incrementing that position. But because it's a post increment, it won't happen until we leave that line. So what we're actually doing at this one here, okay, is on line 29, which where all the magic happens, is you can see on line 29 we're going overall sum is equal to sum of array recursive x end and you're saying to yourself hang on a second you're calling up yourself to do this isn't that a bit you know what i mean is that possible it is very possible but as i said before we need to align that to a terminating condition in our case we need to say if we've reached the end of the array stop i.e. on line 27, the if, right? So what actually happens on line 29 is that we feed in, okay, x and end. Now remember, end is the index. So after going from line 28, from the first time we've gone line 28, we would have gone from zero, and that would have been incremented to one. And obviously then it feeds that in as its parameters to the next time it calls end of ahead records itself and we'll be feeding in obviously we'll be feeding in the same array but now we'll be feeding in an index value of one so therefore it's gone up one and it adds that to the overall sum repeats the repeats the procedure obviously once we reach the length it goes it breaks out of the if and returns overall sum bada boom bada bing that's a recursive method now in conclusion Obviously, yes, recursion is a bit more complex. It has got its advantages, but there is one major disadvantage. Recursion, okay, you will be calling the same method again and again and again. So, in effect, you're spawning that method again and again and again and again, which is going to have problems down the line for memory. Iteration. You're only calling the method once. Yes, it could context, you know what I mean, context switch out, in, out, in, and whatever. But you're only calling that method once, so you're not putting too much pressure on the heap as such. But recursion does. It may seem a more complicated way or a heighty tighty way of doing things, but it's not necessarily the best. However, in terms of interviews, it is important to understand the key components of recursion. Number one, that it's a, its ability to call up itself, its own method typically, itself to do a task. Number two, in order to do that, we need a terminating condition and we need to recognize that in order to break out of the cycle. Okay, so what we're doing realistically is loop. We're not looping through an array or whatever. We're called, we're using the exact same method, however am amount of times we need to do that. Okay, I hope this was some way beneficial to some people. And obviously, if you've got any kind of concept that you need to go over, please do contact me. I will leave my details at the end, at the end of the description. Goodbye, good luck, have a good day, and talk to you soon. Take care.